I'm not scared of dying. I really am not. But one thing that was on my mind this entire time, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to be caught alive. I'm sorry. And I was really scared of that because, you know, I kept on remembering this, this woman that uh, they burned her alive a few years ago, if you remember, her name was Farhonda. And I was thinking, if they catch me, that's exactly what they would do to me. On August 15, the insurgent army known as the Taliban took control of Afghanistan's capital, undoing a 20-year military operation led by the US. As Taliban fighters made their way to the presidential palace, thousands of Afghans began planning their escape. My family and everybody was panicking. They were calling me. They were like, Ariana, you, you guys need to get out of there. As a pop singer, television star, and longtime campaigner for women's rights in Afghanistan, Ariana Saeed was scared, and for good reason. Extremists had previously asked for her head, and colleagues from a TV station she'd performed in had been killed. If I got caught by the Taliban, uh, God knows what they would have done to me. They have been looking for faces like me to make an example of. You know, maybe they will not uh, bother ordinary people so much, but they are actually looking for famous people. They're looking for people who work for the government. Like thousands of others, Ariana headed for the airport. And we were at the airport trying to check in. And we heard gunshots and everything, and then all of a sudden the entire security at the, at the airport and the entire staff, they run away uh, just like that. Groups of people that were there, they rushed into the planes and the planes were like full of them. And uh, the, the plane couldn't take off. Uh, the pilots also run away, they were scared. Uh, so we couldn't take that plane um, that day. Unable to get on a flight, she spent the night in hiding. After leaving the airport on the 15th, we went to a relative's house. We spent the night there hiding. And then the next day, uh, because Taliban had started door-to-door -door search, we had to take a risk and, and leave the house again and, and try to attempt to get to the, to the airport one more time. So we started driving and we passed uh, about five Taliban checkpoints. One of them actually stopped our car and uh, he put the light inside and the minute he saw me, uh, obviously I was covering myself with a hijab and he could only see my eyes. Luckily, he didn't say anything. He, he said, just go. An Afghan woman handed Ariana her baby and asked her to take the infant through. They're like, sorry, madam, we, we, we cannot do that. We will let you in, but we cannot let her and the baby in. When I got in, that's actually the first time when I burst into tears. And that's all because of that baby. That baby is like still, I cannot take that picture out. And I, I don't know if, if, it, if it survived or not, I have no idea. But it was quite bad. It was really, really bad. Um, it was just heartbreaking. Ariana and her fiancé were the last two people to board that night. She had just a purse and the clothes she was wearing. On the plane, people were like, I remember they were like so quiet and everybody was like really sad, really shocked. Because each one of them, every one of them, they've, they've left, you know, the rest of their families in, in Afghanistan and nobody was like really excited and happy about being able uh, to, to come out and being on the plane at that moment. After stopovers in Qatar and Kuwait, passengers were given food, water and clothing before being transported to Washington, D.C. I'm here in Washington, D.C., but I still don't... F I feel like I'm still there. I cannot get over it. And I'm just feeling so bad for all those women in Afghanistan that they are going through such a tough time. I mean... God knows what these Taliban would do to them. I know that we are hearing that the Taliban are saying right now that they've changed, that they will let women, you know, have their rights and stuff like that. 
but I personally don't buy any of that. Until 2001, the Taliban held power over most of Afghanistan, enforcing a strict interpretation of Islamic law. Girls were denied education and women were not allowed to work. Ariana's Kabul-based clothing store has been abandoned. The staff no longer have jobs. We had to leave the entire store. I have uh, about uh, 21 people working for me, including so many of them are women. I, I just feel so bad uh, that, you know, they're all so poor. Uh, they don't have any jobs anymore. The ladies perhaps are not allowed to come out even from their own houses anymore. And while Ariana has escaped, she's scared for those who remain. Our people are innocent. They don't deserve what they're going through right now. They don't deserve that at all. And it's just not fair. <laughs>